Speaker. I love this nation, and I stand on the premise of the Declaration of Independence, even though my ancestors did not benefit at the origins of this nation, I'm a patriot. And I remind my fellow colleagues of the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths self-evident that all men and women are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Our founding fathers understood that this nation would grow, would breathe life into these words and breathe life into democracy. The Constitution began with we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, and provide uh, for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty. This is a living document that ensures that we safeguard America, and particularly we safeguard its citizens and our children. And so in this Pride Month, I wish all of those who are in our wonderful community of LGBTQ a wonderful existence and recognition of your individual liberty. And I am so grateful that this nation allows everyone to have a seat at the table. I want to thank my colleagues for their vigorous celebration of Juneteenth, which is legislation that I introduced and fought for for over a decade. And I am so amazed at the celebrations from east to west and north to south, understanding the ancestors of African descendants didn't get free in Texas until January, until June 19, 19, uh, 1865 and that all of us, no matter what our background, were having celebrations, and members, Republicans and Democrats, were joining in on the liberty of Juneteenth. That gives me hope as we move to discuss the response of H.R. 40, the Commission to Develop and Study Slavery, and find ways of repair and restoration. It gives me hope. And as I mentioned, this Pride Month, it is about liberty, empowerment for all people. So I stand here on the floor of the House with such excitement and exhilaration that I have standing on the foundation this very book that covers the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. That's why it's so important to fight for democracy and to recognize the sovereignty of this nation. And so I ask my fellow colleagues to join me in fighting for the release of Brittany Griner, Paul Whale, and, and yes, many others that are held as hostages, and those who went voluntarily to volunteer to fight for democracy in Ukraine that are now held. But I raise my voice for Brittany Griner today, a young woman born raised in Houston, Texas, graduate of Nimitz High School, family in Houston, who are in desperate need for us to pay attention for the very vile way that she now is being held as a hostage in Russia. I ask the Russian people, I ask Mr. Putin, to release these people, release them from this inappropriate detention, incarceration, and holding. Release them now. Let us pray with the family Release them now. Release Brittany Griner, free Brittany Griner, renowned WNBA player, Olympian, but just a plain human being, an American who's shown herself to love this country and to be such a wonderful, generous person that gives to others, as many have said. My colleague, Congressman Stanton in Arizona, my colleague, Congressman Alred, and I will be presenting a resolution that says free. Brittany Griner now. And then I want to talk about how we honor our dear friend. He passed away in 2020, John Lewis. But I'm reminded of his nonviolent tendencies, and he taught us well. And in teaching us, we were here on the floor of the House to demand gun safety legislation some years ago, decades. And one point we just couldn't 
manage it and take it anymore. And we sat on the House floor. I have pictures that I will cherish because it was nonviolent resistance. Now we have an opportunity to stand in the gap for the families in Uvalde, families in Buffalo General and Tulsa, Woman's and pass expired. real gun safety legislation. Join us and be what America is all about, taking care, creating a more perfect union, Mr. Speaker, and passing gun safety legislation that I and the Judiciary Committee and other members, Chairman expired. Nadler, have really stood up for. I yield back. Chair, and I recognize the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Hyde.